but he has his own way of finding out where the water is. First, he laboriously drills a hole in a giant ant heap when he is sure a baboon is watching him because he knows baboons are incurably inquisitive. Next, he puts some wild melon seeds into the hole and works them in so that they drop into a hollow. Then he saunters off knowing the baboon is burning with curiosity. The baboon doesn't trust that human being at all, so he plays it cool. But he's dying to know what gives in that confounded hole. Finally, Mr. Inquisitive can't take it any longer. He's got to know what's in there. He reaches in, grabs a fistful, and now his hand's too big to come out. If he had the sense to drop the seat, he could free his hand. What's going on, people? This is Nigel. This is Brad. This is the Uplift Fitness Club Podcast. What we on, man? That's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> the theory of sunken costs. Don't have me tell them. All right. And today, it's another concept piece, man. We talking about the theory of sunken costs. And this example came to me in a couple different um, scenarios. One was we had a Harvard business professor come down to Morgan and do a lecture on um, business. And he was talking, actually it was a black guy too. Okay. He was talking about um, a lot of different things, but basically just like supply chain, um, how business is applicable. It doesn't really matter what the company is. Like Mm -hmm. if you understand the components of how to run a corporation, you can run any corporation. He had experience with real estate, Pepsi Cola, anything. Like you just put me in position, I know what to do with the change cuz I've been there before. <laughs> but he right. he teaches a class and he teaches people how to understand business. And one concept that he prevent, presented was um the theory of sunken cost. Um you got a definition of that one? I got a definition for you, man. The theory of sunken cost refers to money that has already been spent and which cannot be recovered. Okay, money that has already been spent and which cannot be recovered. So I got an example for y'all. The way it was explained to me. Two people explained this. That Harvard business professor and Dave Chappelle. So I know one is a bona fide genius and a legend. <laughs> I'm going to listen to him. That's Dave Chappelle. The Harvard business professor, he, yeah. go to, he, he teach at Harvard, so he know what he's right. talking about. All right, so there's a monkey in the desert. The monkey is just chilling. Mm-hmm. Then you got... Uh, a native in the desert, right? So we got a gentleman. He He's very well-versed in this environment. He understands that if there's a monkey here, it got to be a water source. But he don't know where the water source is. So what he does, he got materials on him. Because, you know, as humans, we got opposable thumbs. We got tools. We got things to do mm-hmm. what we need to do. So in his, in his satchel or his whatever he got, here, his messenger bag, he got two things. Melon seeds and he got salt. Monkeys love melon seeds, apparently. I didn't notice. <laughs> and they love salt. Yeah. So what he does, because he got to find water. He's in the desert now. Mm-hmm. Ain't no cactuses around. He can't crack them up. He need water. Take the melon seeds. He drill a hole into his, the side of the hill. And he puts the melon seeds deep into the hole. Now, the hole is just big enough that the monkey can get his hand into the hole. But once he grabs the melon seeds, he can't get his hand out. Right, because he's so, making a fist. Exactly. So the monkey comes. He, he, he holding off because the monkey not stupid. Now, he's been in the, the wild for a long time. He know I can't trust these humans. They be always trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> but it's so curious. He got to know. He just got to know. He got to know what's in that hole. What's in that hole. He got to see it. So a few minutes pass by after the man leaves and the monkey stick his hand into the hole. <laughs> He grabbed the melon seeds, and he not going to let go. <laughs> he not going to let go of these melon seeds. Right. So now he going crazy because he's trying to pull his hand out, um, and he can't get his hand out. And all the while, the man sitting there waiting for him to grab him. He put the little leash on him. Monkey can't go nowhere. That's crazy. And all the monkey had to do was let go of the seeds, right? And he could pull his hand out. And his hand would have came out. But he ain't letting go of these. But instead, <laughs> he's going, he ain't let go of the seeds. There you go. Still making a fist, can't get his hand out. Right. So if the monkey understood the theory of sunken cost, he would have understood 
I've been set up. This is a trap. Let me let go of these seeds because I can find my own right. seeds. Let me count my losses. Count my losses. I ain't going to be able to get what I thought I was going to get. Clean myself up. Right. Right. Reset my expectations. I'm out of here. He don't understand he a monkey. So the dude come put the leash on him, <laughs> tie him to a tree. Yeah. Now he got that salt in the back pocket. That's the killer. Mm-hmm. He pulled the salt out, throw it on the ground. The monkey can't resist the salt. <laughs> He like he like black people with right. hypertension. It just go together. <laughs> he already got caught. He got caught. He's well like, the salt. oh, you know, at least I'm gonna get this salt. So he go, he eat two big lumps of salt. Mm-hmm. Now the dude wait a whole day. Now what's gonna happen? You eat salt, and you sitting there for 24 hours. Man, you be thirsty then, man. Probably, <laughs> probably within the first 30 minutes to an hour, you gonna be thirsty. We can be thirsty. I can only there. imagine, you know, the monkey, the little body eating all that salt. There you go. He's thirsty, thirsty so instantly. The the man though, monkey gonna be thirsty. He let the monkey loose. This is John tweaking. He can't wait to get to the water. He don't care who see and he go, him going to the water. He don't as soon get, as he get up the leash, <laughs> he's Usain Bolt to the water. Usain Bolt. So he goes to the water. The dude is running behind him. Um, and he leads him to the reservoir. It's like tucked off in the middle of a, a valley you would have never known it was there. Right. But all because this monkey doesn't understand the theory of sunken costs, a cost that has already been spent. You already lost these melon seeds, bro. Right. Open your hand up, go away. Now your whole monkey family going to right. have a water source. Now all the humans know it's water over there. They <laughs> will come the drink all your water up. Okay. <laughs> So that's the theory of sunken costs. Essentially, it's just understanding what's good for right now and the here and now and not holding on to the previous way of doing things or or what your expectations were. So let's get into it. First example we got, man, outside the monkey. (laughs) What we got, man? We got got Blockbuster, man. I don't know if people knew that. I didn't know this. I didn't know. I mean, now thinking about it. It makes sense. <laughs> it but I didn't know sense. that Blockbuster, you know, had an opportunity to buy Netflix. There you go. And it, by, you know what? Our our viewership is going to vary in age, but there's some people probably listen to this. They don't really understand you know, what Blockbuster was. That's wild that some people don't even know what <laughs> Blockbuster Man. Blockbuster, because you think about it, Blockbuster probably been dead for like 12, 15 years. That's crazy. Well, that's crazy. 90 babies, so at least, I mean, driven past one. Exactly. So, Man. Blockbuster was, that was where you went. If you needed a VHS, yeah. DVD, even at the beginning of DVDs. Yeah. That was the spot. You want to go watch a movie? There you go. You go on the Blockbuster to go Video cops, games. So. Vid- you yeah. go on the Blockbuster. I, used to, I think I used to rent video from games. video games for them as well. We had on. one. Yeah. We had one up that shopping center. Yeah. Right across right the from, street. Yeah, so... Blockbuster was like the central location. If it wasn't GameStop, I think they had GameStop back then, but right. you was going to rent DVDs, VHSs, anything you was watching right. at the Blockbuster. You know what? Blockbuster's closed fist, right? Back to the monkey theory. They right. closed fist was that they held on to the idea of late fees. Right? Late fee? Because if you they don't return, first off, not even just late fees. You remember, if you ain't rewind the DVD or the VHS, you was going to get charged a fee. And Damn, Blockbuster was making some money. They was charging. Look, it was there was it was like the the movie theater basically. So yeah. it was upcharging you on candy and popcorn. Remember they used to sell candy and popcorn. Yeah. So it was yeah. it was you get your DVD, you get your VHS, whatever it is, you get your candy, you get your popcorn mm-hmm. at the front desk. You got to return it within three, five, seven days, whatever it is. Right. And you got to spend more if you want to keep it longer now. Yeah. And then you take it home. You got to rewind it, bring it back within the time, and yeah. you're going to get charged the regular rate. If not, you got late fees. Man. 2005 come along. Maybe it was earlier than that. Netflix came in the game. Netflix came. It's like, look, it. we forget all that. Keep the movie, right? right. Keep the movie. Cause we got tell, it. Tell your friend. That's the power of word of mouth. A lot of things. I don't remember no Netflix commercials. I do. Coming up, you, you I remember Netflix lie. commercials? I remember Netflix commercials. And I don't remember watching Nickelodeon seeing no Netflix. I seen them, man. They say good. I remember it was Netflix had the same commercial as GameFly, and GameFly was GameFly had a short time because it was like I don't know well, what. I this is back in the day when commercials wasn't. Man, it's bad. I don't know. Yeah, I was watching a lot of TV. <laughs> <laughs> I was too, though, at a point. But yeah, that's that's crazy, man. Netflix is smart, man. They 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 said basically you can keep it. We ain't worried about the late fees. You got to think about the other competitor too. Who's Redbox? Redbox. So I do not only Redbox. It's three things converse. One, you got this mark. You got it's what's called a cash cow. 
Like this is the thing that makes you your most money, mm -hmm. but it's not generating new revenue. You're just living off the reputation. Right. So the, the cash cow is blockbuster, right? Yeah. Like Floyd Mayweather, it's the cash cow. Yeah. But Netflix come up. <laughs> Who's beat me? Net <laughs> blockbuster is the cash cow. Netflix is new. They up and coming. They yeah. rising in the ranks, beating all these no names. Yeah. And you got Redbox, every McDonald's. Everybody can go to McDonald's. But you got all these competition, all yeah. this competition just popping up. And Blockbuster is holding on to this outdated model where we're charging late fees. You got to bring it back to the store. Now, bear in mind, Netflix is shipping it right to your door. It's the difference between, you know, I don't know. It's the difference between on demand and you having to sit there during the time that a TV program is on your TV at 8 o'clock on the dot. So Thanks. what Netflix did is they shortened the supply chain. Um, basically, like to go to Blockbuster, you had to get in your car, go to the store. Go get your DVD. Convenience and fact. Make sure it was on in stock. If it wasn't in stock, you had to go back to the next blockbuster. Right. Go back home. You ain't got no video. Now you mad. Now you mad. So you now you now, <laughs> now you about to outsource. <laughs> right now you about to go to Netflix. Now you looking for Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> so now you got to drive back to your house, pop it in. Netflix is like we gonna take all that out. We just shipping it to your door. Keep it for as long as you want. No no late fees. Right. At some point, Blockbuster had the the opportunity. To purchase Netflix All right. for fifty million dollars. Had a chance to get on the way. You had a chance to buy. You could eliminate the competition for fifty million dollars. That's all you had to do. But they wouldn't let go of them seeds. The monkey seeds, man. They wouldn't let the go. Melon seeds. They ain't willing to let go. They're not willing to change. They're not willing to adapt. Times Lord. are changing fast too, man. You remember the computer <laughs> back in 05 computer now? That's true. That's true. It's it's crazy the amount of stuff that can be done on this. I remember the first time I seen the iPhone, I'm like what? The iPhone 3? What? <laughs> That's the first one I seen. The iPhone it's 3. the 3G. It seemed like they just skipped the 3. Did Bro, they have a 1 or the 2? I, we wasn't. I ain't had it. <laughs> I wasn't even allowed to get one and probably when it was out. All right, so this would this would happen. Obviously, you ain't never seen no bag on Blockbuster in the past 10 years. Yeah. So Blockbuster didn't take the opportunity to buy Netflix. Netflix is now one of the most successful Miss, media companies. Missed out on a hell of an opportunity. In the world. I mean, I mean a share of Netflix. Uh, a hell of an opportunity. plus uh, right now. Uh, uh, a hell of an opportunity. They, I mean, they dominating the video. <laughs> they got straight to Netflix movies now. They got every hey. comedy special hey. is on straight to Netflix. I can say this. Netflix job don't pay... That, that <laughs> Blockbuster job don't, don't pay, pay like my job. <laughs> That's what Netflix is saying. Blockbuster, right now. It's, I man, Blockbuster went from like nine thousand locations worldwide to like one in China somewhere. <laughs> and the Blockbuster is doing bad. Man. And you can see the creative mind of Netflix. They continue to adapt. They continue to let go of the seeds, essentially, right? Yeah. And keep and they, and on. continue to adapt. And it's it's like one, they were able to shorten the supply chain and emphasize quality like the other thing is blockbuster didn't have the, the consumer in mind mm -hmm. like they were all about their bottom line and their profit you have to be consumer oriented anytime you're dealing with business right. value so what value <laughs> whenever it's a service <laughs> like you can't be attached to how much money you're gonna make yeah or you know what you did last year what that, is right? good for the customer in this moment right now absolutely because that's going to create that i mean your, your, your customers is is how you eat right so if you're yeah. not taking care of them you're not gonna eat let me give the people another example of the theory of something called what you got for them, a recent example man last year yeah i remember like it was yesterday this is the worst loss I ever took in the stock market. Yeah. I was I was a baby. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I, I was I was so the I didn't know what to do. So I had but I, I got some news on Beyond Me. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I got, I got some edit. I got they had it <laughs> they it's a it's a um a company, right? Beyond Meat is like a, a meat replacement company. Yeah. It's not getting no better, but <laughs> I, we're gonna be mature on the power, right? So basically, I got news on them. Um, they was gonna have a evaluation, a right? They were gonna say this is the the oh the the quarter was closing, so they was gonna okay. report their earnings for the quarter, and they did well, or maybe I was expecting them to do well because they had announced the deal with Fridays. They was gonna be on the menu at at Chili's or something like they did a couple contracts. I'm hearing good things. Mm -hmm. I'm a buy beyond me before this earnings call. Hopefully it goes up. I make a lot of money. I put the whole account. I was trading every play I made. I was play. I was trading with the whole account. Yeah. 
Man, Beyond Me, Ernest Call came out, right? Mm -hmm. I think they did earn. I think they did improve. But for some reason, the stock just plummeted. Yeah. Man, it went from like one, I want to say like 106 to the next day, like $90. It lost it lost 15 plus percent overnight. Yeah. I was like, what am I supposed to do? I done lost like four, five hundred. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm like, man. So this whole time, I'm just thinking like, all right, I'm going to wait because I've seen stocks plummet and then they rebound. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, okay, I'm going to set a limit at like, $95 in my head. I ain't set no real limit because mm -hmm. I would have been out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, it rose up a little bit. I wasn't watching it. I'm like, I'm going to just hold it long term. And it's, at the end of the day, I ended up taking the major L. It was like my first major L. Mm -hmm. And it's just because like, okay, one, I wasn't knowledgeable enough on the company. I'm not the type to, to understand the financials and looking at a, right. and an evaluation and know exactly what a company is. Right, you didn't dive do. that deep. Right. I'm just thinking, okay, they it's good news. I'm going to buy. Mm -hmm. That's really like rudimentary examples of how to trade. Like, you doing that, you're going to lose. Um, the other thing is, like, once I seen that it's performing bad, get out. Cut your losses. Yeah. Like, people be so scared to, to let go of the idea that you're going to make money on this. Yeah. That they just, they holding on to the melodies. I mean, shoot, that, that even ties in with just... You know, speaking for myself, even with relationships, like I've been in where like I don't even want to, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to let go. I don't want to count my life. I feel like I didn't invest it too much. You know, I didn't done That's what so anybody much. too. Right. Yeah. And I don't want to let go. But <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you make it worse. Sometimes you make it worse. And you know what and happens? A lot of times it's like because you're not willing to let go of that person. Right. But you keeping them around mm -hmm. just so you can get like as much of the jabs in as you need to. Like right. you resenting them. You keeping them around, but you resenting, resenting them. them. Right. And every time you have a conversation, you like you you know what I'm saying? You yeah, carrying yeah. that with you. Right. So you can't you can't even get back to where right. you, you can't grow back to. You can't right. grow. You can't grow. And you definitely can't go back. Right. So you just stuck in this this cycle of this like loop. resentment. Right. And you know, my I've experienced that too, man. Yeah, man, that's big, man. Relationships, man. Hey, it's this hey, is listen. We giving hey. y'all stuff that apply. Don't apply just because it's a money exam. Don't mean it just apply to it applies money. Applies to a lot. Some of y'all in careers, man. Y'all need to let go of them careers too. <laughs> oh man, You've been in a job that you hate hey. for ten years. Hey. I'm looking to run. Right, <laughs> run out that. Dude. But you know where that, that, that comes from. And yeah. we touched on it before in the pre-production. It's like when you when you have that attachment, I think you said there's no other you feel like there's no other option. Right. You, you I mean you have the blinders on, right? It's yeah. like a, a racehorse that got blinders on, all they can see is just that line, what's directly there. They're not looking at the door over here. They can't see the door over here. They can't even turn around and look at the door behind yeah. them, right? They only seeing this is it. This is the future. I'm just going to stick with that. And I don't have any other options. And you've been in that position with Pepsi. Like, when you asked old boy for the promotion, yeah. he was like, oh, he took the blinders <laughs> off. <laughs> he realized what's going on. Right. right. Like, if you really think about it, you sit down and you think about how much money these corporations is making off of oh your gosh. effort. I did the math. They have work. They didn't know. That I, they didn't know that. <laughs> they didn't know. They didn't know that I was diving that deep into it. I'm looking at the math like, yo. You're right. They making hundreds and thousands off of me. And, and I'm hours. only getting what? Right. <laughs> like Yeah. Yeah. Look, this I'm, is crazy. I'm thinking about um I was talking to my mom about Lifetime. She used to work at Lifetime back in the day. Mm -hmm. My sister did too. Do you know what Lifetime Fitness is? Nah. Lifetime Fitness is Never like this. It. It's Globo Gym. If you ever seen um the movie Dodgeball, it's Globo Gym. Mm -hmm. Basically it's this huge facility. They have everything you could want in this gym. I'm talking about they got an indoor pool. Yeah. Now, I, this gym is like Ray J's house. You, you remember Ray J was on the Breakfast Club? I remember Ray J. Man, Ray J was on the Breakfast Club. Yeah. He talking about his crib. And he said, yeah. I got an indoor pool and an outdoor, outdoor pool. pool. Yeah. I got an indoor basketball court and an outdoor basketball. Yeah. I got seven Rolls Royces <laughs> outside right now. Damn. This is Lifetime Fitness. I'm talking about they got two collegiate-sized basketball courts. About four racquetball courts. They got a daycare so you can drop your kid off for twelve hours because they'll feed them too while you're there. They got a sauna. They got a they got a 
five hot tubs. They got a water slide outside. Right. And they got weights in the upstairs. They got three group fitness rooms. I'm talking about this. You ain't never seen nothing like this, gym. They got everything. They got everything. For the for the power lifter all the way to the, the recreational gym goer. Right. To just the basketball. All the way to the walkers. And it's a hundred <laughs> plus dollars a month for a membership. So in a peak hour, you might see a hundred thousand dollars worth of people walk through that gym. Yeah. And then on top of that, they got the cafe with the smoothies. Yeah. And the pre-workouts. Yeah. They got their own line of supplements. Yeah. They got a hair salon, bro. Like they they covering all they got a spa. This yeah. is the gym my mom was working for. I mean, basically, bro, like what she realized what what I realized in conversation with my mom was just like this the amount of money that they generating yeah and they're they're selling you like this is our structure and the the structure and the infrastructure is what the people value and they do like it's an amazing facility but for real for real the community and the facilitators are the people that bring the value Absolutely. so if you can recreate that feeling without necessarily having to have that major investment if you think about lifetime the 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 hundred thousand an hour that they could generate in the peak hour during COVID, they couldn't generate that. Right. So now they just got this in, this huge facility with all of this hundreds of thousands of equipment with no people in it, and you can't justify. You know what I'm saying? So the future of fitness, for real, for real, is in us. Like it's the people. It's not the the place that you're going to, because mm -hmm. you could do anything you want to do in the comfort of your own home. And I'm, I'm sure. realizing that now. <laughs> <in> my home. <laughs> That's all a part right. So two. the the sunken place. So we the, we the we sunken. we equating the monkey with his hand in the in the hole trying to get the melon seeds to the sunken place. Sunken thing. But if you holding on to these previous ideals of what used to work in the past, yeah. you really not focusing on what's in front of you. So you in the sunken place. Right. Now how do we get out of that? How do we change our circumstances so that we we recognize opportunities when they present themselves? You get rid of that attachment. Attachment. You got to learn and unlearn. You got to you got to relearn you can. and unlearn. What is it? Right. The illiterate of the 21st century yeah. will not be those, be those who cannot read. read and write. It's, it's those who cannot unlearn, Learn. relearn. What is it? It's, not, it's those who learn, relearn, right. and unlearn. unlearn. Right. So you got to be able to get rid of that attachment, but how do we get rid of attachment? That's the yeah. question. How do you get rid of attachment? First... First is to touch on what you touched on is find that value, right? In yourself. Right. You have so, to see yourself as worthy. Exactly. Okay. You gotta okay. be you had to you had to let's go back to that meditation. But you know what? You gotta recognize that there is attachment to begin with. That's true. If you tell a person, like if your homeboy <clears throat> come to you and he in a relationship that's toxic, like clearly toxic, right. a lot of times if you pull his coat to it, he probably not gonna agree with you. He probably gonna like vehemently deny what you're talking about. So if a person is not in acknowledgement of the fact that they're attached to something, they mm -hmm. can't change. So once you acknowledge it, then then you can find that value. Find the value in yourself. So right. you have to see yourself as worthy. So first is recognition that, all right, I'm attached to something. Then, all right, I'm worthy of making a change. Right. Then what do you do? Yeah, you, know, you, you, have to, you have to get into believing in your ability. And right. determining what you want. Right. And determining what you want. So the, so believe in yourself so you're worthy, right? You mm -hmm. recognize that you have a problem. Right. You determine that you are worthy of making a change. Right. Now you're at the point now that you started to believe. You believe right? in you yourself. You believe in your ability. You believe in your ability right. to change. Right. And then now you, have let's to adapt. Define, you have to define what you want. Right. Because if you just, I need to change, you could change for the worse. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Get rid of your attachment by going to addiction. And we're gonna touch That's on this on a later date. <laughs> but but you I mean you have to you have to define what it is that you want. And right. that has to be based in and I mean it has to be clearly defined, right? It has to be ethical and it mm -hmm. has to improve your circumstance. Right. And you have to now we at that point where you have to let go. Right. And that's the hardest That's the part. hardest part now. <laughs> because the, now at that let go stage, you know. You know all these things. Yeah. You've recognized what the problem is, you've you've probably written down the solution. Right, but you not you not ready to let go, and you can't change until you do. You gotta you let go. Cannot, of something. right? You cannot you cannot fully commit to that change until you let what, go. Whether it's a thing, a person, yeah. and that person could be yourself, the way that you used to exist. Look, let's just say <laughs> letting go is gonna be a huge part, man. You 
you've had you will have not many regrets when you can let go of things at the appropriate time to let go, right? You cause more problems for yourself when you're hanging on. You know what? Because honestly, and it's not a it's not necessarily about you. Mm-hmm. It's about that person, right? Like, too, like if you let go of someone, they're yeah they're gonna be angry in the moment, right? But then eventually, if they're being honest with themselves, they'll realize that you weren't able to give them what they needed. Exactly. Just like you couldn't get what you needed from from them, them. right? Um. And it's a dip, man. It's difficult, man. It, I know it's difficult, man. I know, been through it, but I'm going. I'm, but you always going through it, right? Hey, y'all gotta adapt, man. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta believe in your ability to get it back, and not necessarily as it was the first time mm-hmm. you experienced it. Like, believe in your ability to get that feeling back. Like, whether it's happiness, gratitude, joy, appreciation. Because all of that is is programmed within you, right? Man, we we talk about the matrix all the time. Hey, that's the whole movie. concept that I never understood <clears throat> till three months ago was that they literally coded all of this stuff in Neo's mind. He knew right. Taekwondo, Jiu Jitsu, all this different stuff, right? right, right. Krav Maga. Right. So when he goes to fight, it's all there. But all he has to do is just believe that is there right. and believe in his ability to to accomplish it or to uh, to see it through whatever it is I mean, that was the whole concept of being the one was just him believing that he is the one and ba- that's it <laughs> and basically that's all it takes it's like who is oh my god bro i've been thinking that's about all this, it takes. this idea of like mm-hmm. individual experiences mm-hmm. and like whether we all experience the world. I mean, we do, but whether we all experience the world differently. Like basically, um, whether or not there is an objective reality. Like if we can, you and me can agree that this phone case is black, right. but is there a different black in your mind than in my mind? It's really abstract, but it's just like, what is undeniable is that in your existence and in your objective reality, you are the one. Right. You're the only one that can change your circumstance. People can help you. They can give you yeah. things. Yeah. But what you do with it dictates <clears throat> your results. So people always feel like, like you know, Hollywood is different and the NBA is this different universe and rich people are here and poor. This is one ecosystem. And if you decide that you are going to benefit from this ecosystem, you will. If you hold on to an idea long enough. The Man. idea will manifest with and through you. With and through you. And then you got to divide. And mo- well, you don't got to. <laughs> but yeah. you should, though. You should divide. You should, though. Man, unless you want to be like Drake. Stop. <laughs> when I die, put my money in the <laughs> grave. <laughs> hey, man. Stop holding on to the past. Uh, the past does not dictate your future. And you got to believe in your ability to get it back. You deserve to be admired if you make it back quicker than you lost it, man. That's a Wale quote, man. Shout out Wale. You deserve to be admired if you make it back quicker than you lost it. Man. So the quicker you can realize, like, oh, I got it the first time. Yeah. I could get it back. And then just put them actions with them intentions. Create that momentum, man. Whew. I'm surprised we got through this, man. I ain't gonna lie. Hey. I think it's going to get through this, man. That's just how it is when you can't get sick. Can't get your city. <laughs> but God bless, man. It's Uplift Fitness Club Podcast. Boy, I got a lot of editing to do. <laughs> Write it down. You can't wait your whole life to make a change. Believe in yourself. Innovate with integrity and intentionality. So if you drop the seed, he'll free his hand. Yeah. And he'll be gone. But he's so he go when it's too late. He want that shit so bad. Yeah. So that was a smart enough way to catch a baboon, but he still has to make him talk. Now he knows that salt is very scarce in this particular area, and that baboon is going to eat those lumps like candy. He's gonna make him thirsty as In fact, he has such a ball eating salt that he completely forgets he's under arrest. 
and that in a little while he's going to be a mighty thirsty baboon. Next morning, the Mahalakhadi goes to have a closer look to see whether his prisoner is ready to talk. He decides the brainwashing has worked, so he sets him free, knowing that in his condition, he won't care who follows him to the secret reservoir. Boy, I gotta be in shape ready to run, boy. It'll be a long ass run. They ain't kept him there so long, he don't give a fuck who follows him. He don't give a fuck I'm thirsty as That's why you gotta take a sh Boy, that shit didn't build that. I don't give a fuck. I don't work with that toilet is. The beauty of the setting. To him, water is beautiful. Top dog. 